Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Today is Wednesday, the 6th of October, 2021. Thank you for tuning into my channel. Really appreciate that. Now, listen, guys. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot going on. The biggest mistake that the, the Central Bank of the United States has ever made is when Jerome Powell came up and said, we have tools to fight inflation. Uh, I'm going to tell you, we were like a rocket ship. All that, all that liquidity that they poured into the system was like a rocket ship. And we were reaching escape velocity. The economy could have come back onto its feet if he hadn't have made that statement. We can fight inflation and then they start to actually chop. They started to chop. And one of the ways that they chopped was the reverse repo operation sucked up tremendous amounts of liquidity from the banking system and parked it at the Fed. Just parked it. Over in excess of a trillion dollars. And then, then what they did was they cut off all these stimmy checks that they were sending out to everybody. Just cut it off cold turkey. Well, that's like a rocket ship blasting off. And we were on our way. The trajectory was outer space. We were, we were on our way there. And all of a sudden, they turned off the engines when we were about, just when we were halfway there. You know what's going to happen? We're going to fall back to Earth <laughs> and crash and burn. <laughs> Biggest mistake they ever made, you know, in my estimation. Yes, we are going to head toward massive inflation. But economies can run with inflation. But what they're doing is, is they're pulling the rug out from under us when we're not completely standing up yet. Anyway, let's get in there and let's take a look at what's going on. Let's open up the charts right here. First thing I want to show you guys is Poland decided they want to buy more gold. Oh, we need more gold. We need more gold. But they're going to buy it in 2022. Well, I got news for Poland, you know. Are they going to buy it with their own currency? They should buy it now. <laughs> Don't wait till 2022. Uh, uh, you might have to print endless amounts of currency to buy it. <laughs> Because these, these Western currencies compared against gold next year, the year of hyperinflation, and it's going to happen anyway because they can't, the governments over here in the West, they can't let the, afford to let all of their people that they're governing. You know, I mean, this is the thing. The government relies upon the people. Maybe they don't realize that right now. Maybe they don't realize that they need the people. But when the people can't, don't get food, when the food prices skyrocket and stuff, what's going to happen to the currency? Because the government just can't let everyone in the whole country starve to death. I mean, I mean, it's just ridiculous because if your food good prices go up double today and double again and don't think they can't because take a look at this guys i want to show you something and we're talking about europe here but gazprom is is a big russian company stationed i guess in moscow and they control the natural gas that flows through europe uh it says that uh european gas prices have risen more than 170 percent since the start of this year well, guess what? They just, from what I hear, they just rose 40% more last night. I guess on top of the 170%, they already rose. Like they, they've nearly doubled. They just, just in the overnight, and it, not doubled, but 40% up. The European gas prices have risen more and more than 170% since the start of this year, raising concerns for worsening energy poverty. On Friday, uh, the uh, 17th of September, the European Commission said that uh, uh, that it monitored the situations in the press conference. The Commission said that global increases in gas demand has caused prices to spike. 42 MPs ranging from the Greens through the... Uh, okay, basically what they're saying here is they suspect Gazprom is manipulating the gas price. Gee, do they? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something. A trade war was started a couple years ago. I never heard anything about that ending. 
And Russia and China, they're good buddies, you know. And I'm going to tell you what. These natural gas prices are affecting the big greenhouses for food production. In uh, the Dutch greenhouse, Dutch greenhouses, you know, and you'd be amazed how much food they produce. They're the second biggest food producer next to the United States for uh, that type of food. Those type of foods like uh, onions and uh, and uh, uh, cucumbers and uh, all these different kinds of foods that come out of a greenhouse. Well, you can imagine tomatoes is a big one, you know, uh, and this goes all across Europe. Well, they keep those greenhouses running with natural gas. And the price went up 40% last night. So what do you think that's going to affect the price? Because they have to pass those prices. They have to keep those greenhouses warm. They have to pass those prices on to, uh, on to the price of the produce going to Europe. 40, that means 40% up in greenhouse prices for the gas means 40% up in probably the prices of the produce overnight. And not only that, a lot of them, the greenhouse producers, are just turning their greenhouses off. That's it. Flick the switch. Lights go out. I guess the plants die. I don't know. But, uh, like, they're only running it right now. What I heard, the last thing I heard was about 60% production. That means 40% of the production of all this food Massive amounts of food that goes to Europe, it's just going to be gone. So, you got two things coming together at once. First off, the end of 40% of production. So, there's only 60% of the food that going out. That, and now, with this new spike in price last night of 40% more for natural gas, maybe half of those ones that are left on will turn their, turn their systems off and say, well, we're not going to make any money with this, the bottom line. And so, money controls everything in the system. You go to your grocery store, those groceries are there because of money. There's a problem with the money in all of the West. So, I'm going to tell you guys, do I think that we're going to have a, 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 a war? Like, a lot of you guys are worried about World War III. I don't think, I don't think so. But I think this trade war is going to continue. And this trade war is all they need because it, well, it involves money. You, uh, you can bring a country to its knees uh, through money. A country can be brought actually to its knees because of money. And there's a problem with the money in the West. Is our money is not backed by anything. So Russia and China over there, they're just sitting there and they're, they're twiddling their thumbs watching. Uh-huh, you know, their thumbs are going back around, and they're sitting there looking and watching what's happening in the West. Meanwhile, Russia's just spiked the prices of natural gas up. That's going to be another nail in our coffin over here for the whole Western world. When I'm talking about the Western world, I'm talking about all North America. I'm talking about uh, the countries that are linked to the West, too, like Australia, Japan, you know. Uh, all of the uh, European countries that are on the western side, you, you know, I mean, you know, but I think the border ends over there, uh, Poland, you know, I think, and uh, uh, countries like Poland and and, uh, and uh, Ukraine, Ukraine, I mean, I would say Ukraine, yeah, I don't know why I say, it. I've been saying that for years, but uh, it's Ukraine, uh, and so there's the thing. How are we going to manage if money is what drives the entire system and what runs the entire... How are we going to manage when all of the currencies of the West are flawed? Were we going to run on Bitcoin? You know what? I'm not joking. I'm not really joking about that. Anyway, let's get in there and take a look more on the, uh, the subject of the silver price today, which is down 28 cents. Oh, my gosh. I mean, how? Everything else is double. Natural gas just went up 40% last night. But silver is down 28 cents. Silver and gold are the only two things in the whole Western world that are the core fundamental, the bedrock, the foundation 
of the entire world's financial system, actually, the entire world's financial system. Russians and Chinese, they know that. They've stocked their gold away. They've been socking it away for, for years there on my channel. I was saying, well, they're shipping more gold out east. You remember my shows from two, three years ago? I used to say, they're shipping more gold east again, more, more gold heading to China, you know. And these Western politicians over here, they could do what's called rehypothification, which is basically selling their gold on lease. It basically works like this, you know, they get the politician in charge, he's in charge of the gold there or whatever, and he says, okay, we're going to lease the gold out. What does that mean? It means they're going to sell it into the market with hopes to buy it back at a cheaper price in the future. Maybe the lease is five years or two years or whatever. When the lease expires, they're supposed to buy the gold back. In a perfect world, that's the way it will work, but this is not a perfect world. In this world, they lease the gold out, China buys it, or Russia buys it, stocks it away in their vault. What chance do you think you're going to get it back? And, you know, these Western countries have taken their gold reserves right down to, like, like uh, dust in the wind. There's nothing there. It's just like... You know, and, uh, meanwhile, these big piles of gold over there in China and Russia, and that's the fundamental behind the world financial system. So what else is there if there isn't gold? If you don't have gold, what else do you got? You got fool's gold, Bitcoin. And that's what we're going to have over here in the West. <laughs> that's going to be our only gold because I don't think we got much for reserves. I mean, Germany still got a little bit. A few countries still got a little bit, you know. And they want more. Now Poland wants more. <laughs> Good luck with that, Poland, if you wait until 2022, especially in the latter half of 2022. Buy it now. Buy it now. This is my suggestion. Buy it now because you're not going to get any if you wait until, especially in the latter half of 2022 when the hyperinflation hits. Your money ain't going to be worth anything to buy it with. Uh, so right now, they want 100, uh, what do they want, 100 tons? Let me look back at this article here. Poland wants to buy more gold. They want a lot, too. Uh, yeah, 100 tons. They want 100 tons of gold. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you, when your dollar, when your Polish dollar, I don't know what the currency in Polish, Poland is, but when it goes to worth nothing, you ain't even going to be able to buy an ounce. So, so buy it now. If you want it, buy it now. Uh, let's take a look at the gold price today. Silver's at 2236 Gold today, seventeen fifty nine. It's down a dollar thirty. Now we're taking a look at cryptocurrencies, which is at twenty two seventeen. It's up a lot from where it was just a few days ago. You know, current cryptocurrency, it's doing real good. Bitcoin's at fifty two thousand four hundred and fifty three. Bitcoin's probably the only thing out there that's actually reflecting the true. Uh, nature of inflation. So we've seen the Bitcoin price compared against the dollar. We've seen how it, Bitcoin price has been going up. Like it was, it was five cents back there in 2010 or whatever. You know, and now it's fifty-two thousand four hundred fifty-three dollars. Well, it's only reflecting what's happening in with the dollar. I mean, you know, and, and the silver price, you know, and gold price is the only thing that's actually went down during that period in time. Silver and gold, like a few years ago, were up. Silver was at 50 bucks. Where is it now? Less than half that price. So they're moving in the wrong direction. Something's wrong there, big time. I know what it is, manipulating the price of gold and silver. It's going to break because they're going to run out of physical metals. Simple as that. Okay, Dow Jones Industrial Average today is down 401 points on the day so far, or 1.17%. Uh, I told you guys months ago this market peaked, and it's been uh, it's been staying peaked. You know, it hasn't broken above like 34,000, 35,000 cents. This market's not going to break through those boundaries and go to 40,000. Until after uh, the 
central banks of the West have relented and decided to feed their people and went back to fiscal policy again. They removed the physical pol fiscal policy, fis fiscal stimulus. Fiscal stimulus is your stimmy checks, guys. They remove that, and uh, until they go back to that in some form or manner, you know, uh, we're not going to see the Dow take off again. But they're going to have to go back to that. If they don't want the people to just basically, uh, more and more people are going to start to run out of money in the system. And they're going to have to have something like a UBI or, or STEMI checks or something going out there to feed the people. Uh, otherwise, they're going to have a, uh, a situation like happened back in France, back in uh, hundreds of years ago happen. If, if they don't feed the people. Because if, the point when the people really start to get upset is when they don't get fed. It's as simple as that. And, uh, yeah, we're coasting on vapors now. We're like a guy who hasn't put any gas in his tank. Do you remember there was a Seinfeld episode years ago <laughs> where uh, Kramer was driving this car and it was on empty. And he kept going and going on empty and it was like a contest with him. To see how far he could go on empty before the tank would run out. And it just kept going and going and going in the car. And he was like all exhilarated, you know, until it ran out of gas. And that's the thing right now. We're running on vapors and the government's sitting back there. And they're not too worried because we haven't quite run out of gas yet. But when we run out of gas, in other words, the people start to go hungry. It's going to start to come in all at once with the masses of people. And they will, the politicians... There's only, there's very few things they really care about. One is public opinion. Because they know what that means when public opinion goes too low. When it goes deplorably low. They know what that means. And they will react. They will respond. They'll do anything then at that point to try to keep, to try to prop up public opinion and stuff. You know, they'll start to move. Uh, it's just like a guy that uh, hasn't went to, uh, to the bathroom for a few days and he takes a whole bottle of X-Lax. <laughs> That'll move him. That'll move him. Okay, so now we're on to uh, crude oil here. And it's at 77.71. It's down $1.22. Now the move index is at 62.83. And it's creeping up today. It's starting to climb move index but you know this thing can shoot up fast if there's instability in the credit markets bonds and rates today what we're looking at is uh, we're looking at uh, the uh, my only small movements in the yields today uh, we're looking at a fall in yields on the 10 year it's at 1.51 it's fell 1.9 basis points which is not much the 30 years moved a bit it's uh, 2.9 basis points at 2.07. Now we're going to finish off with the dollar index today at 94.36 and rising. Yeah, it's rising because um, this is the best one of these currencies it's being compared against, and they're all garbage. Okay, guys, listen. Give me a thumbs up and uh, lots of comments. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the very next show. And you guys have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.